Hi guys, this is Steve Good with Scroll Saw Workshop. Wanted to put together another uh, little tutorial video tonight uh, for using Corel Draw to create scroll saw patterns. I'm still getting uh, quite a few emails asking uh, questions about Corel Draw, and I know there's several of you out there that are working on your own patterns right now. And I just want to continue talking about some of the tools that I use in almost every pattern. Um, in today's video, what I would like to talk about is the Interactive Contour Tool. This is a tool that I use uh, probably on every pattern that I create, if not every pattern, very close to it. Um, it has uh, a few uses that uh, it's basically the only way to get some things done. So I'm going to take you through just a short little video here of how to use the Interactive Contour Tool. Okay, just a brief description of what it is, and then we'll go through a little bit about how to use it effectively. I'm going to uh, create a rectangle on the screen, and what I can do with this rectangle, let's say I wanted to make this the outside walls uh, of a box that we were going to cut out. Now what I could do is hit the plus key to create a second one of those rectangles, and I could move it aside and select it, and if I wanted to make this the inside of the walls, I could come over here to my transformation tool, uh, set the uh, horizontal and vertical uh, percentage to 90%, hit apply, and this box would be smaller. I could then uh, center that in the screen, center this in the screen. I could go up and use my uh, back minus front and cut this inner circle or inner rectangle out of the outer rectangle, and I would have the outside walls of a box for us to cut. Now obviously you could use that for uh, different types of things. You could use that for a frame uh, around a picture or whatever. But anyway, the whole goal of what I just did was to create this frame that we could uh, use in a pattern. Now again, uh, I put a couple of little pieces of uh, art I've created over here to give you an idea of what you could do, do with this. Now I could take this box and use our weld tool to add pieces to it and build up a pattern that way. But now let me show you another example that uh, might make this uh, um, a little more obvious of why the interactive contour tool is the better option than just creating uh, two objects and uh, cutting them out of each other. In this case, what I'm going to do is go to my shape tool and I'm going to select the heart shape. I'm going to draw a heart on the screen and I'm going to do the exact same process that we just did with the box. I'm going to hit the plus key to create a second heart. I'm going to select this heart and again with the 90% selected I'm going to apply it and now we have a heart that's 90% of the shape of the other heart in size. I'm going to go ahead and tap the P key to center that one. I'm going to tap the P key to center that one and if you look at this heart that I just created, and let me blow it up extra large just in case you can't see it. See how the uh, contour is not very effective, how it's smaller here than it is here. Um, with unusual shapes, you'll get this effect, and it's not very pleasing when you cut it out. It just doesn't look right. Now, I'm going to take and do the same thing, only I'm going to do it with the interactive contour tool. I'm going to select my shape tool. I'm going to go up here, select my heart, draw it on the screen, and now this time I'm going to go back to the interactive contour tool, and that will bring up my uh, contour tool um, selectors up here at the top in the menu bar. And uh, just run through these real quick. Uh, the different ones you have are, then the two you use the most are inside. In other words, we're going to create the contour on the inside of the heart. We can create the contour on the outside of the heart. This will be the number of contour steps, which I'll show you in a minute, but in this case we want to just leave that set at one. And this will be the actual dimension of the contour offset. So in this case, let's say we want to make it a quarter of an inch. So there we've made, we've done exactly the same thing that we did with this heart, only you'll see that our contour is exactly matched all the way around the entire heart. So to create a heart-shaped box or you know, if this was part of another pattern, again, this would be the preferred way of doing it to this. I mean, it, you can obviously see the difference in the two and that this looks much better. So that's why I use the interactive contour tour tool much more often than the other uh, where I actually just create two shapes and cut them out of each other. Now, there's one 
a uh, little bit of explanation that goes with the interactive contour tour tool that at this point we need to talk about. Right now what I've done is I've created a heart shape and I've actually just created a contour on the inside of it but these are not two objects they're they're still just one object so you'll see with it selected I don't have my back minus front or any of my other transformation tools up here so there's one step and if you can remember this one step then using this tool becomes very easy and the one step that you have to do after you create this contour is go up to arrange break contour group apart this is the one step that everybody forgets how to use with this tool that's very important when I select that now that actually has made these uh, two different hearts two different objects and you can see when I move the inner one that uh, the outer one doesn't move so now what I can do that I have two different objects now you can see my uh, different shape uh, tools appear up here and I do have my back minus front and uh, that now if you look let me go back and explain this a little better right now we have two different shapes here <clears throat> let me uh, select one and you can see the back one I've now colored green and the front one I've colored yellow so I'm going to center these on the screen and you can see what I have. I actually have a smaller yellow heart on top of the larger green heart. Now what we would want to do to make this uh, box the way we want it is to uh, select it and use our front minus back because our front is yellow, our back is green. And when we do that, you'll see that it cuts the yellow out of the green. And now I have the shape of the heart that I was looking for. Um, so that's how we use the interactive contour tool. It, it can come in handy with all types of shapes. I can use the oval and go up and set the dimension. Well, see what happened here. I changed the contour steps to two, and you can see what's happened now. I have two contour steps in here, and this is the one you always want to leave on one in this case because I just want one contour. Uh, offset. So at this point I have a uh, circle that has a quarter of an inch contour and again it's still one object and we have to break this apart to make it work. So I've done my circle, arrange, break contour group apart. Now with that selected I have my front minus back, I can do that and I have uh, an oval frame that again we could take and continue to, and this might look familiar to it, this is the how I always begin making uh, my ornaments or some of the little trophies I make you know I would take this shape right here and add another shape to it which you've seen me do on several of my patterns um, to create the little trophies and stuff that I make so I could take this uh, oval frame that I've created select this object here and center both of them I could go and select both of them use the weld tool and there obviously we have the beginning of some type of pattern I can't tell you exactly what I would use it for but that's uh, you get the idea right there in a lot of cases I've used these oval frames to put uh, sports figures in and then I'll go and put a little base on the bottom and then weld uh, the base to the frame like this and th now you can see how I begin to make those uh, trophies that we post on the website so often so that's the interactive contour tool that's the reason I use it is because the contour uh, is more precise than trying to create two of the objects and then cutting one out of the other uh, so give the interactive contour tool a try you might have to watch this video a couple of times to get a handle of uh, what I've done but there's actually basically just one step you have to remember and that's where you go to the arrange and then break uh, the interactive contour apart uh, that's that's the step that everybody always misses so again give it a try let me know if you have any questions and uh, I'll try to put another video up with another tool as soon as I can thanks for watching bye